Greetings, Mythics. How are we all? Yes, it is another week. It's another Wednesday, and it's also 6.30 UK time. Give or take a couple of minutes. This is Grockle Snook. My name's Ken Boiter, but you probably already know that because you've been watching the Edward Tells Twitch channel. You might not have done, then you don't know that, but I've just told you, so you do know that. Yay! See how that works out? Yes, this is the show where we delve into playing game books. Yes, good old-fashioned paper. In this case, it is the upside down. There you go. It is the House of Danger. It is by Z-Man Games, and it is based on the book Choose Your Own Adventure because there was a series of books in the 80s and 90s. I don't know how long they actually ran into. Maybe the 2000s, early 2000s? Choose Your Own Adventure, where you get to decide how the story unfolds and exactly what's going to happen tonight. You can make the decisions by commenting which choice you'd like as we progress. Hello, Martha. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Had my evening snooze. I don't know. Is that too loud, the music? Let's turn that down maybe a little bit. Maybe one more. There we go. Yes, I have had my evening snooze, which is exactly what the doctor ordered. And also, I've got my honey tea. So that's always good. Hopefully you're doing well as well, Martha. What we'll do is, because I have a murder mystery rehearsal after, we'll crack straight into it, I think. Let's have a look. And Jonathan is with us as well. Hello there, Ace Game Books. The Choose Your Own, Choose Your Own Adventure books are still being published. <coughs> He's shocked. I'm shocked. Wow, that's impressive. Um, they were advertising for an editor recently, Jonathan. How about you get involved? Yeah, that would be a good one to get involved with, surely. Uh, Martha's here. Not, to, not too bad. Uh, and I was clearing some boxes with hobby stuff and dropped one on my foot. Now it hurts to walk. Oh, sorry to hear that. Big hugs to Martha. Um, yeah. You've got to be careful when you're clearing out boxes. That's all I can say. All I can say. And Jam is here as well. Hello there. It's the Jam Man. Yes, good morrow to Jonathan as well. I pinched some ideas. Oh, I pitched them some ideas, but they didn't like my style. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Didn't like your style. That's, well... You can only put it out there, can't you? That's the thing. You can only try. I actually pitched a book, or maybe two books, but it's certainly one book, to Mills and Boons. Mills and Boone, years ago, because they, they were just accepting unsolicited manuscripts. I guess it was too good. <laughs> there could be a case for that. I might actually... We've not done too many Choose Your Own Adventures. In fact, I don't think we've done any. Have we? Maybe we've done one. Didn't we do like a... Well, that was another... T anyway, maybe we should do a proper Choose Your Own Adventure book. Also, one happy thing, I found my fabric scissors again in a random box. Yay! Fabric scissors. Fabric scissors. Always don't cut anything else with them. People don't like that. <laughs> if you borrow somebody's fabric scissors... Just cut fabric. That's my lesson. Anyway, yes, as I say, we are playing House of Danger. This is chapter three. So part three, chapter three. The game is actually, this is a game. So they've given us a little board. It is based off of the book. And on the back, they've given us a dreamscape. So if you go to the Edra Tales Facebook group, go to the media tab and then click on albums and then click on House of Danger, you will be able to see this image here that has all the dreams that we keep having, psychic dreams, and it also gives us this chart here, this board that we use to track our progress. And Lirin is here as well. Hello, hello. Lirin has uh, got our massive respect because he's just defeated the final boss of Dark Souls 1, the downloaded content. That is amazing. Well done. That's a big achievement. I've not played Dark Souls, but I think I'm gonna. That might be my next game. It looks bonkers. It looks really, really hard. So yes, we have a scale here. We've got a psychic scale that tells us how psychic we are, and we've got a danger meter. 
danger zone, danger zone, which tells us how much danger we're in. And as you can see, we've got three threes, three fours, three fives, and one six, and then a minus two. So you can check that out as well on the Facebook group in the media section folder, yeah, under House of Danger folder. And we've also got some clues. We've also got some clues Wait, that you can check out as well. I've put them up. <laughs> Bear with me. They're still under the scanner because <laughs> I scanned them in. So you can have a look at those as well in more detail. <laughs> They'll be still under the scanner. There they are. <laughs> Okay, so we've got this clue, this clue, and this clue. And I think it was Jam said that this looked like, yeah, look, this kind of looked like the web lady thingy, maybe. Or we met the nurse, the, the cook, or whoever she is. I think we've met her in the game book in the last chapter. Hello, Wallop is here as well, E-Spikes, if that's how you pronounce it, E-Pikes, e e Epics, 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 I think I've worked it out now, <laughs> I'm so sorry, um, I do have slight dyslexia, so when there's some odd, sort of not odd, but you know, not usual words, I do, yeah, Epics, yeah, <laughs> there you go, takes me a while, but I'll probably get there. Sadly, might not make it Friday. I'm going to visit the doctor. Oh, and get a shot for my... Uh, after it tends to knock me out. No worries, Martha. Martha's talking about a live stream that I do Friday evenings at 7pm UK time. And we are playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. First time I've ever played it. We played about two hours of it. It was fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Allergy. Oh, the allergy. Yeah, it's a pollen season. It is upon us. Indeed. So, what has happened? We are trying to crack the case. There's some psychic stuff going on. There's some weird things. The police are kind of involved. We've got into the house of danger. There's this sort of strange, sort of modern but ancient manor house that we've, we've broken into. Some sort of crazy maze. Some sort of ape-like creatures. Um, we've not come across them yet. Um, and we've managed to get in, and each chapter has a goal, and we've managed to crack each goal every time we get there. Um, and we are... Um, we got, we'll got we have a new goal, but we don't know quite what it is. We're, we're trying to go into the basement, so we're just getting into the basement. We have various items with us. We've got a key glass key we've got a money full of a briefcase full of money hello we've got a, a large metal rod we're not sure what that does yet we've got the marston family ring only in his drink <laughs> no do i want a spider um depends what kind of spider martha <laughs> we've got a withering metal sphere i'm not if it's a real spider then i'll probably pass pocket knife we've got truck key We've also got a battery that we don't know where that fits. Um, so that's our that's our little list of items that we've got. And we are on the psychic scale. We're on twenty two, so we are actually nearly the full capacity. We're nearly fully trained as a psychic. Twenty two out of twenty five. We're on level five, and we're on the top three. We've never actually got out of the, the, that three. We don't want to rise up that chart because that's the danger zone, danger zone. So, let me set the little board up there. There you go. That's my little my little note there of where we were. So, right, what are we going to do then? Before we do anything, I always like to draw a wisdom card. Druid wisdom card just to set us on our way, on our adventure. Let's see what we can get this time. We'll go for that one. Oh, hello. <laughs> Never had that one before. Look at that. That is the Stone of Oban. Or Oban. Oban. 
Uh, do not forget the importance of the company you keep. Friendship is the is a warm fire to stoke. It's comfort we reap. Oh, isn't that nice? And what better company than you lot? <laughs> what better company to keep than the company that we have now? Continuing on desktop. Good to hear. Hopefully it will all work for you on your desktop. So, let's crack in to the House of Danger. And as you can see, I've not read these. These are still cellophane. So I'm discovering the story and all the clues just as you are. We'll crack that open. We don't crack that open. There we go. Oh, I, do I do like it when you open up a new board game. I really do like that. So this chapter is called The Rescue. The Rescue. And we've got a new cellophane pack of clues. So let's... Let's crack these bad boys open. Hopefully we can get some more clues to find out what all this psychic dreaming is about. What the hell is going on? <laughs> okay. So, first thing we do is we read the opening sort of entry to the chapter. War and Peace. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't have to... <laughs> exactly. So the rescue, chapter three. You're still not sure what's really going on in this place. You were already freaked out by the creepy stuff you saw outside the Marston house and the discovery of actual spirits from beyond the grave inside the house only made you more on edge. You steal your nerves and remind yourself that you are not just an aspiring detective, you're a psychic investigator. You eat spirits from beyond the grave for breakfast. Mm, gain four points. Um, yes, just a good point, actually. We did encounter the ghost of the Marston. Was his name Richard Marston? I can't remember, but he was the owner of the house. Not really. But the... Well, not really. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just kind of spoiled that joke. Right. You eat the spirits from beyond the grave for breakfast. Not really. But the point is, you feel a surge of confidence. You can do this. At any rate, you've come way too far to turn back now. So all you can do is hope that the depths of the house hold some insight into the mysterious nightmares that have plagued you for weeks and draw you to this modern architect house of horror in the first place. But the lift, which all your hopes rest on, is totally trashed. The last person to use it must have really hated lifts. Based on the scratch marks on the walls, they might have had sharp claws too. That's not too encouraging, is it? A strange sensation now washes over you. Your head spins and you lose your balance and you fall to your knees. Although you don't quite black out, you're overwhelmed by visions as your consciousness leaves your body and travels through the house's lower reaches on mind power alone. You drift down downward through a meeting room full of huge shadowy figures and a laboratory stocked with equipment. This doesn't sound good. Your awareness projects deeper under the estate. You finally come to a jail cell. Your mind can't penetrate to see who is inside, but a wave of anguish emits from it like heat from the sun. You sense the person is trapped inside is responsible for what you have encountered so far and could help with what you'll encounter next. Oh, feels like a trap. It does kind of feel like a trap, Martha. It does feel like a kind of trap. So that is the vision that we're having. And now it says draw clue 78. Okay, let's draw clue 78. No, not 78, 76. It's very important to get the right one. 76. Okay. Chapter 3 Goal. Here it is. This is our new goal for tonight. Rescue the prisoner you sent from your psychic projection. Okay, so we're going to rescue the prisoner in that little cell. 
could be a trap, like Martha says. Your mind jolts, your joins your body again as though as though swiftly snapping back into place. It takes you a moment to get your bearings. You're in your own body, in a lift, in a spooky house that you somewhat regret ever setting foot inside. You check the panel and find that all the buttons have been pried off, except two. They might be only active. That they might be for the only active basement levels. Of course, it's also possible they're just floors that whatever wrecks this lift wants to lure you to. Your Martha might be right there. With a whoosh, the doors open briskly. So you have your first choice. What would you like to do? It says here, would you like to press the buttons for the sub basement? Uh, number two. So, or would you like to press the button for the sub basement three? So if you want to go to sub basement two, type two. If you want to go to sub basement three, type three. You decide. I'm not deciding for you. I'm just reading it out. I'm your humble storyteller. The might, nightmares might have been a scream out there. Yeah, they could have been. Absolutely. I like to think we're kind of rescuing somebody that's in prison for an injustice rather than somebody that's actually in prison for a crime. I don't know if I flipped this over or not, but anyway. <laughs> there we go. The chapter we go, the more dangerous a dungeon gets. Yeah, the deeper we go. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So, we're going to go to number three. Going to number three. Right then. Let's get the correct entry. The lift drops with a jerk and continues to sub-basement three. Straight onto the yeah, ab yeah, abyss. The door opens up into a room with tables holding funnels, glass beakers, test tubes, thermometers and safety goggles. It looks like a biochemistry lab. It's a complete wreck, just like the lift. So you can add biochemistry to the list of things the vandal has a grudge against. There's a desk in the corner. Based on the pattern of stuff scattered on the floor, it appears someone was dragged away from it by force and then taken out a door and down a hall. Another door leads into a room where you can see a large glass vats full of glowing blue liquid. Doesn't sound good. Oh, look, we've got an illustration. So what would you like to do? Would you like to follow the path of destruction down the hallway or would you like to enter the room with glass vats of glowing blue liquid? So type hallway if you want to follow the path of destruction down the hallway or type blue if you want to enter the room with the glass vats of glowing blue liquid. What could possibly go wrong there? You decide that is the smashed up lab equipment. Oh, people are keen to know what the liquid is. Could just be, you know, like uh, them trying to create a fizzy drink when it's gone wrong. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, this was the very early origins of Prime. Here we go, blue. It looks like people want to go and check out the blue vats. Let's check them out then. 67... Okay. You see rows and rows of glowing blue vats, all filled with chimpanzees. No, look at this. No. In various stages of development, the largest one, the largest ones are big as adult, no, it's adult humans. Someone is blending, bending the laws of nature to unethical extremes down here. Poor animals, yeah, absolutely. The vats are plugged into a utility box on the wall. On top is a glowing cap with three crystals. It might be some kind of power source. Something about the crystalline cap calls to you. It feels important. From the utility box, 
box, cords and wires run into an adjoining room through a propped open door. There's also a conveyor belt that leads through an opening in the far wall. The belt is moving slowly and the motion is mildly hypnotic. Grockle Snook stares on in abs- Yeah, exactly, Grockle Snook. I know. Shocking what they're doing. So there are the chimpanzees. We have an optional challenge, which is strength, but we haven't got anything that adds to our strength, so bear that in mind. However, we are on the lowest score, so we do we have the best chance, really. We need to roll a 3, 4, 5 or 6 to defeat it. If we win, we draw clue 87. If we lose, we raise the danger meter by 2, but we can try again. So, vote yes if you'd like to take the optional challenge to find the clue. Or no, if you think we should just push on with the choices and carry on with the story. Martha's put no. Lirin would like yes. Anyone else voting? Jam is also voting. That's two for a yes, one for no. Okay, so it looks like we're going to try to attempt this. If we win, it's clue 87. Okay, which dice? I'll let you decide. Which dice do you want to use? Do you want to use the talisman die? Do you want to use the black die? Or do you want to use the yellow die? You decide. What would you want to do? Type talisman if you want the talisman dice. Black, if you want the black dice, or yellow, if you want the fighting fantasy yellow dice. What do you want to do? Oh, Martha wants black. Anyone else have an opinion? If not, we're going to go with the black. Black dice. It's f- Yeah, film noir after all. Okay, okay, you're a consensus here. Okay, so we need a three, four, five, or six. Here we go then. Let's get a six. Remember that. Remember, it was a good roll. <laughs> okay, fantastic. We win. Draw clue 80. A fluke. Thanks, Jam. Yeah, you and your fluke. I'll give you fluke. <laughs> okay, we have clue 87. Crystalline cap. You pry the crystalline cap from the utility box. Even unplugged, it keeps glowing. What? What sort of science fiction is this? The object gives you a shiver. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward three spaces on the psychic scale. One, two, three. We are now at the maximum psychic scale. That's it. We can't go any higher. We're level five, number 25. So that's fantastic. And we have, there we go. There's the crystalline cap. Very good. Genie appropriate dice bluff added to luck. It wasn't luck. It was skill. When it's a one, then it's luck. Okay, so another choice you have. Would you like to follow the cords through the door? So the cords are connected to the monkeys or the the tubes. Um, Or would you like to jump on the conveyor belts to see where it goes? (laughs) So, if you want to go uh, follow the chords, type chords. If you want to jump on the conveyor belts, type belt. <laughs> you decide. Chords, yeah. I don't know if jumping on the conveyor belt would be a good idea. Could be dangerous. Might not be. You only live once. Why don't you try it? Give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, so we've got two votes for chords. By the way... If you are watching and you would like to comment, you do need to follow the channel. Twitch has it like that. If you want to comment on any Twitch channel, you do need to follow it, follow that particular channel. If not, if you're just happy to watch, you're more than welcome to, obviously. Okay, remember, we only have two extra lives. Yes, exactly. That is true. Okay, so we're going to go and follow the chords. 72, 72... Here we go. 
The room is filled with generators of every shape and size. They all look extremely unsafe. In fact, one of the older, larger ones has a huge crack in it causing... Uh, casting... Oh, no, casing, sorry. But it's still running with irregular bursts of electricity arcing from it a nearby surface. You'd rather not get too close to it, but you'll have to if you want to investigate the door to the vault on the other side. The only other exit isn't a door at all, but a massive hole in the wall that leads into darkness. <laughs> that sounds encouraging. Uh, as you feel around the dark for a light switch, you discover that the passageway isn't so much a hallway as a tunnel with a rough walls that have been dug out of the rock and soil. Oh, look, there you go. That's how unsafe it is. <laughs> Worst. Uh, judging from the claw marks on the elevator, yeah, the belt could lead to super fun, happy slide werewolf. <laughs> Just waiting for us. She's coming through. Okay, so look, there, look at that. So you have another decision to make. Do you want to try and get past the crackle generator to reach the vault? Or do you want to take the tunnel into darkness? So type reach, no, type vault, V-A-U-L-T, if you want to go to the vault. Or type darkness, if you want to go to the darkness, into the darkness. Come, my friends. You decide. What would you like to do? Vault, if you want to go and check out the vault trying to go around the electricity, or you can go into the Tunnel of Darkness. Not fantastic choices, are they? It's the lesser of two evils. But sometimes on an adventure, that's the case. That was creepy, Ken. Stop giving me goose kebabs. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, Martha. I'm sorry, that's my performing side of me coming out. Okay, is anybody else voting? We are just doing the vault then. We're going for the vaults. It only takes one person to vote. And if no one else votes, they get they get to choose. Vault, Martha also wants the vault. Okay, good stuff. So, we're going to read out the vault. See if we get past electricity. <laughs> yeah, readers beware, you're in for a scare. Okay, here we go then. If you ever find yourself running a criminal organisation, <laughs> here's a great way to weed out your dumbest and least trustworthy henchmen. Put a big, temp tempting vault door behind a deadly piece of machinery that kills anyone who gets within three feet of it. Unfortunately, the trick works on young psychic investigators as well. You press your back against the far wall and try to scooch towards the vault door as safely as possible. But it's no use. Uh-oh. A hundred thousand volts of electricity surge through you and your smouldering body slumps to the floor. Dead. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> That's a great illustration. Let's go back and black. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, it does let you carry on. So it does kind of give you more life. So it just says the end. Then it says move back two spaces on the psychic scale. So we've been punished a little bit. And it says and return to story card 72. Oh, OK. So it just says, yeah, go into the tunnel of darkness. So that's what we're going to do. So it does sort of let us play on. So it's not necessarily the end. So we're not we're not actually cheating this time. So that's good. <laughs> Show the picture again. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Look at that. <laughs> That's a really great picture. Right, okay, so we are on 87. Going into the darkness. There's another picture here. Not sure it's just a door by the looks of it. <laughs> Evil chuckle. You can't see more than a few feet in front of you as you walk down the tunnel. So when a man's voice calls out from the darkness, you almost jump out of your skin. Hey, you. You freeze. What now? You're the new lab assistant, right? It's about time you got here. Have you the briefcase? Have we the briefcase? Oh, yes, we've got a briefcase. If you have clue 38, we have got clue 38. Unfortunately, it's the... Briefcase, briefcase full of cash. 
Okay. Give it to the mysterious stranger by discarding it and, and drawing clue number 62. See, I like this mechanism where you kind of... Clues lead on to other clues as well. That's really clever. Because it's not interrupting the main story. Because if you haven't got it, it says um, draw 82. So it's cool. Pleasure doing business, he says. Even though you give him what he wanted, he still uh, spits on the floor and grumbles about his crew waiting for him in the garage as he hurries away. Your psychic senses tell you that he's that giving him the briefcase was the right thing to do. Move forward two on the psychic scale. Okay, we're back up to full maximum psychic scale, 25. And then it says finish story card 87, which is this one. The man rushes back down the tunnel in the direction he came from, his footsteps booming in the darkness. There's a door with iron bars built into the wall here. It looks like it could lead to some sort of cell or maybe a kennel. It's unlocked. There it is. There it is. Yeah, The Ranger's Apprentice. I've got that, but I haven't read it yet. I'm pretty sure I've got that. Okay, so you have another decision to make. Do you want to follow the man down the tunnel? Or do you want to open the cell door and see what's inside? Bearing in mind, we are trying to get to a prisoner behind a cell door. So this could be what we're looking for. But what would you like to do? It's not me for decide. You decide. If you want to follow the man down the tunnel, type man. If you want to open the cell door and see what's inside, type door. You decide. Well, I have a cheeky drink. Yeah, I think the sensible thing would be the door. Because if the guy's just waiting to get paid off, there's not a spider. There's not a spider. Oh my god, there's a, there's not a spider. There's not a spider. Okay, so we're going to go to the cell door. 62. Yeah, because I think the guy basically just wanted to get his money and run. And he said he was meeting other people in the garage. So you don't really want to get caught up in that, do we? You slide open the barred door. It looks much more industrial than the other rooms you've been in. The door slides shut on its own. Clang. And you hear it lock behind you. Oops. We have got a glass key. That might be it. You see some kind of grated structure down the hallway in front of you and quickly press yourself against it, the, against the wall when you realise that the two figures are guarding it. There's also a desk on the side of the room that's out of the guard's line of sight. Okay, if you are level three or higher on the psychic scale, which we are, we are level five, then we get to take and have a look at clue 80. There we go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We've got a flaming brain. <laughs> Barbecue, anybody? Look at that. Look at that. There is not a spider in there, Jam. I'm just... I'll give you a spider. Right. So that is another clue. Um, not quite sure how that relates. Let's have a look. Should we just show you this? Does that actually relate to anything, do you think? I don't know. We've got a frog down there. There doesn't seem to be any brain or anything, does there? Hmm. Don't know what that means. Is it some sort of, you know, because it looks like they're doing some sort of animal experiments down there. You just lost your appetite. <laughs> okay, so what would you like to do? Would you like to try your luck with the guards? Or would you like to sneak across the room to the desk? What would you like to do? So, if you want to try your luck with the guards, type guards. If you want to sneak across the room to the desk, type sneak. You decide. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? What should they do? Gothic Nook? Oh, interesting, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's not a bad decision. Okay. Anyone voting? Because otherwise Gothic Nook has got it. Sneak, sneak. Oh, we've got two for sneaks. 
Sneaky DD key. What the heck? My desktop net just died. Oh no. Are you back on your phone then? Back on your phone. Okay, here we go. We're going to be sneaking across. So that is card number 23. No, number 63. Got to get the right cards. Oh no, that's frustrating. Can you reboot it? See if it works again. Okay, you make it to the desk unnoticed. Well done. Did you make a grave error on it? The only thing here is a fancy new computer. Hmm. It's a shiny beige box. <laughs> oh, oh, the eighties. It's a shiny. What is it? It's a shiny beige box. That's a contradiction, isn't it? Underneath a monitor that glows with rows of green text. Yay! And a blinking command prompt. If you can manage to break through the computer security, you might find some useful information stored in its internal memory. So we have an optional challenge. It's an I1, which again, we haven't got any um, extra points for us to use. It says, search the computer for information. If you're level three or higher on, this, on the psychic scale, which we are, add one to your dice roll. Brilliant. So, would you like to do it? It's a Commodore 64. I, I really hope it is a Commodore 64. I never had a Commodore 64. I was a Spectrum boy. Spectrum 48K. Thank you very much. Okay, would you like to do the challenge? If we win, we draw clue 66. If we lose, the danger meter goes up by two. We can't do it again. However, we get a plus one. So we just need to roll a two, three, four, five or six. Would you like to do it? Let me know now. Yes, if you do. No, if you don't. <laughs> it's that straightforward. That's a yes from Martha. That's a yes from Jam. Let's get hacking. <laughs> exactly. We've all seen... What was that 1980s one? Oh, where they hacked in and it, it was war, war Games. I think it was just called War Games. And it was like two teenagers hacking into the Pentagon. Yay. <laughs> War games, there it is. Hey, I knew one of you would know. Okay, so we need a two, three, four, five, or six. Let's get a six. Here we go. Hey, it's a three. That'll do. That'll do. So just a reminder, that's two good rolls in a row. Would you like to play a game? Would you like to play a game? I don't think I ever saw War Games. It was just one of those films that passed me by, but I know of it. Okay, so we get to draw clue 66. What have we got? You can't crack the computer security. Oh, well, but we've done it. But then you notice an index card taped to the underside of the monitor. Written on the card is B at N at N at. Is that banana? Could this be the computer's password? You try it. Bop. It works. Brilliant safety there. After a few seconds of poking around in some files, you learn that there's a very important prisoner being held in cell C. Finish story card six. So we need to get to cell C, everybody. Cell C. Okay. Right, so we do... Uh, it says... Uh, the one way out of here is down a hall to a gate, which is guarded by two chimps. <laughs> Approach the chimp guards by going to story card six. We've got, we're going <laughs> to, <coughs> I'm loving this. Chimp guards, what more do you want in an adventure book? 74. Here we go. The two guards are huge chimpanzees as tall as you are. It's getting, it's getting serious now. They are walking upright just like you are. They are wearing security guard uniforms just like you are not. They are drinking PG tips. Unfortunately, you're not. They notice the key difference. They attack. We're getting attacked by chimpanzees. Continue the rest on the phone. More stable. Yeah, go for it, Lee So we have got a punching, fighting challenge. It's a required battle the grounds. Win, we turn over the card to continue reading. 
lose, we're going to raise the danger meter by four and try again. However, just to let you know, we do have a plus one. We do have a plus one. So, because we've got a pocket knife, we're going to stab some chimpanzees good and proper. We're going to stab them up good and proper. Right. I've got to remind myself of the rules, actually, of combat. So let's have a look about combat. Because there's not been loads of combat in this, has there? Not been loads of it. Okay. Um, challenges. Uh, well, I guess it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Some cards are You must run there. Yeah, if you roll less. Okay, yeah, even that. Some clues are challenge boosters. Oh, okay, so even combat is exactly the same. So we get a plus one. We need to roll a two, three, four, five, or six. Here we go. Let's get a six. It's a five, but we got a plus one, so that's a six. Hurrah. Okay, we turn over reading. Once you defeat the chimpanzees' guards, you've stabbed them up good and proper, you find that the gate will only open with an electronic key card. Ooh, mama. Ooh, mama. It says here, if you have clue 28 or 77, you can open the gate. Ooh, this could be risky because I don't think we've got those. No. We haven't. Oh, hang on. 28 or 77. Oh, we haven't. 56, 30, 87. Oh, hang on. But these ones we did get. 28. Oh, no. Oh, 29 we've got. Okay, so it says if you do not have clue, go to story card 88. Oh, no. Right, this this isn't necessarily good. Okay. This was luck. The fluke, not a number. Come on. That's three in a row now. Just remember that when I roll a one. Okay. Chapter three. 88. Without the car key, you're trapped. You can't get past the gate and you can't leave the detention centre through the locked front door. Just about to give up, you spot a hole in the ceiling tiles. MacGyver style. Mostly obstructed by shadows in the corner of the room. <laughs> it says continue on back. Oh, there's nothing there. That's the first time there's been absolutely nothing on the back. Okay, so go through the hole in the ceiling. Look at that, we're sneaking out the ceiling. 70. That was lucky. This was luck. The hole opens up into a vertical shaft with haphazardly placed handholds like climbing oh, like a climbing wall. You've found a secret passage. Challenge required, ascend the shift. So if we win. We're going to lower the danger meter by one and draw clue 81. If we lose, you raise it by two and try again. So we haven't got any extra things to add. Um, no, that's only in combat. We've never really had anything else. It's just always been combat. Yeah, or John Die Hard McLean style. He's always going through that's what I did. What, what did I say? I meant die hard. What did I say? Did I say something else? <laughs> I like ducks. Here we go, Jam. Have one of those. Okay, here we go then. We need a, we need a three, four, five or six. Or did I say MacGyver? Well, that's good enough. That's good enough, MacGyver. Okay, let's raise it by one, two. Now we're into four. We need four, five, or six. We need a four, five, or six. Come on. Oh. Right. Okay, we need a five or six. This is the one. This is, we need a five or six. We can do it. We can do it. Yes, get in there. Cash back. Right then, come on, come on, come on. Right, so, what are we doing? 
we win. We lower it by one, so we're back down to four. Raise, uh, and then we get clue 81. I don't want any of your complaining. I watched a good MacGyver on TV the other day. Uh, did it have Brian Blessed in it? Absolutely fantastic. Gordon's alive. 81. I watched uh, Tells the Unexpected a while back, and uh, it had Brian Blessed in it, which was amazing. Uh, what would I say? 81. 81. Here we go. 81. We've climbed up the shaft. Okay. You've climbed 20 feet with handholds, suddenly recede into the wall and disappear. This isn't just any secret passage. It's a booby-trapped one. Oh, no. Think fast. We've got a required challenge. Avoid falling. If we win, we... Yeah, and we get... To, okay. Right. We need a four, five, or six. Come on. Let's get a six. Come on, MacGyver. The spirit of MacGyver is with us. That's not good. Right, we need a five or a six. Come on. Come on. Five or six. Here we go. Here we go. Boom! Cash back. There we go. Six. Lower the meter by one. Oh, still on five. And draw clue 78. Draw clue 78. Fluke. Don't give me that fluke. Don't give me a little bit, little bit of fluke. 78. Thanks for being a MacGyver fan. I've saved, I've saved up a lot of t t twelve tall Swiss Army knives. Yeah, yeah. I used to have one of those. I remember when my dad bought me one of those. I was over the moon with it. It was brilliant. It had little tweezers that you pull out. It had a little um, toothpick. It had yeah, scissors, bottle opener. It was great. It was great. Right then, what clue have we got? You have found a ledge by getting onto it. You're going to take some serious agility. God, this is they're making us work for this one. Required challenge. Get up on the le on the ledge. Whew. Right. Go. They're making us work for this. We do need a five or a six again. Come on, we can get a six. Here we go. I have a Swiss Army knife myself and love it. Yeah, here we go. This is number six. We need a five or a six. Come on. Come on, this is it. We're gonna get a six. Come on. A five will do. A five will do it. A five will do it. We're still on five, but uh, that's good. So, clue 73. <laughs> we will do this. Come on. This is good, though, because you're meant to have the key card. They're really making us work to get through this obstacle. So it's not totally barred us, but it's making it hard. There's a passageway carved into the stone wall here, but someone has piled up with a bunch of rocks to block the entrance. Required challenge. Move all the rocks. God, they're really going for it. I thought they'd let us through this time. Okay, we need a five or a six again. Come on, let's get a five or a six. Let's get a six. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on, we need a five or a six. Come on, here we go. Let's get a six. Come on. A five will do it. There we go. <laughs> Whew. Right, hopefully that's the last one. What's that? 79. This is quite a good way to continue the story if you go down this route. So it's not interfering with the main story cards or the main story, but it's, it's a good way of giving you extra story but without interfering it. And you might not go this... Because if we had the key cards, we would have just got through. And now I have the MacGyver melody in my brain. <laughs> yeah, the pilot jack. Okay, so halfway down the passage, you find a chimpanzee sitting at a desk. Of course we would. He's writing his latest novel. He's smoking cigarettes. This is for kids. That's what I love about this. He's smoking cigarettes and watching TV. Probably Benny Hill. He looks angry. No, Planet of the Apes. That's what he'll be watching. Hey. Um, required challenge. Now, we do get a plus one. It's a fisticuff one, so we get a plus one because we've got a pocket knife. We're going to fight the, the, ang the angry chimpanzee. He looks angry. Uh, he must be watching Planet of the Apes. Okay. Right then, here we go. We need a five or a six. 
Um, five or six. Here we go. Let's get a six. This is a six. Oh, that's not good. Right, we need a five or a six. Come on. Five or six. Come on, we can do it. Boom. Hello. Hello, six. Right. We've done it. We get clue 75. They really are making us work for this. Don't give me that fluke. That monkey business. I've forgotten what one I said. 75? Have we got 75? No, 75. There it is. Jam, do I need to send you a ghost hug? <laughs> Aww. Okay, here we go. You run past the chimp and right in to a 10-foot guinea pig. Hmm, interesting. It is adorable and it can kill you. Best of both worlds. Attack it, fight... Oh, okay, so you can attack it by fighting, sneak past it by dexterity, heave a table at it, strength, climb over it, climbing, or find another solution, perception. So, well, the only one that where we get uh, extra bonuses is the fight, so we better fight it. We're going to stab up a guinea pig now, good and proper. <laughs> okay. So we need a five or a six. Oh no, we need a four, five or six. Four, five or six. Here we go then. A four, five or six. It's a five. Yes. Now we're back down to four, which is good on the uh, on the danger meter. And we get clue 77. Does it only move it down by one? Oh no, move it down by two. So we're still on four, but we're on the middle four rather than the top four. Okay, so, and we get clue, what did I say? 77. <sighs> okay, we're doing this. We've just, we've just slaughtered a guinea pig. It's a giant one. It was attacking us. Self-defense. It's not a fluke. It's not a fluke. Okay, you see an access key card on the floor. Hooray. It must be the guinea pigs. You grab it and run through the doors in front of you, unsure of what is on the other side. At last. Bloody hell, we got this. Keep this item. Okay, go to story, story 69. Flashback to the, the Fluke Man and X-Files episode. Oh, I've not been... I, I never got into the X-Files. I never really watched them. Should I watch the X-Files? There's a lot of them. It's meant to be really good. It really gripped a nation or two. You are now in a chamber with three prison cell doors. We're getting there. They're heavy iron things with small barred windows that make it difficult to see what might be inside. There's a ring of three keys hanging from the nail on the wall. Look at that. The first three seasons. Oh, okay. Quagmire was my favourite episode. Giggity, giggity, giggity. No, not, not that Quagmire. Okay, so look at the keys. Look into the keys, not around the keys. So, what would you like to do? Would you like to try cell A, type A, B, type B, or cell C, type C? We know we're looking for cell C, though, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. It was cell C we were looking for. So, do you want to just vote, or should we just do cell C? Because we remember now. I remember. Yeah, let's do cell C, Martha. Yeah, absolutely. It was the one with the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, was it? <laughs> so, we're going to go to 85. 85. Jams also put C. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Someone sleeping in the cot in cell C. That's quite an American, isn't it? We wouldn't use cot. With a thin blanket over their face. Oh. You can wake the prisoner up so you can taunt him, attack him before he can attack you, or just tiptoe out of the cell. What would you like to do? Choose one, then continue. Um, it says, if you are tried talking to the prisoner, we're going to draw clue 67. If we attack him, you proceed with the challenge on the back of this card. If you'd rather leave the cell, then we go to this other one. What would you like to do? Subquest clear in sight. Turned out to be Jonathan Green in the bath. <laughs> Nessie isn't bad. He's, she's just kind. Do you want to talk to him? 
Yeah, let's try talking to him because we, we're pretty much sure we know this is the right cell. So there's no point in trying to bash him over the head or stab him up with, with a shank. Try and shank him. Um, okay, we're going to draw clue 67. Here we go. Talk, but use <laughs> Makaton signing. You gently shake the prisoner by the shoulder. He flings the blanket from his face. It's an exhausted looking man who's obviously relieved that someone has finally come to rescue him. Thank you. I'm Professor Marston, he says. Marston, you ask? You related to Henry Marston? That was his name. Yes, this was the estate of my ancestor, General Marston. But at the moment, we have more urgent things to discuss. We have indeed. So, card 90. Oh, oh, would you look at that? Oh. It says, Chapter 3, Goal Achieved. Talk, but you, yeah. Professor Marston looked, worri looked worried. You have to help me stop the, my former research assistant, he says. She's twisted our scientific research for evil. Yes, he said. No, so she's responsible for all those chimps, you ask? Yes, he says. But there's nothing bigger afoot, apart from Bigfoot. I'm talking about the alien science. Alien science? I like Mars bars. Ooh, well, that is alien science for you, isn't it? Marston says he can find all the answers you're looking for but you should first make sure you've prepared to leave this section of the house behind. He can give you explicit directions to important locations if you think you might have missed anything. So we can do a story return. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later on in the story. You can take the risk. Go back for any you missed making the following choices below. So it says here... Ominous lighting, yeah, lightning in the background. If chimps were circular, would they be chomps? <laughs> okay, so um, it says, do you want to go back to the biochemistry lab? Raise the danger meter by three. So that would be, would be on one, two, th would be on one, two, three. Would be on the middle five. Do we want to crawl through the air duct uh, to the conference room? Have we been to the conference room? I don't think we've been to the conference room. We raise it by three. Or we can go to the printing press room. We can raise that by three. Or you can head to the generator room, um, which I think we've already done before. So let's just see what which one we've done before. So, 78. Have we done 78. We have done 78. Um, we didn't follow the, the destruction pathway. That's the biochemistry lab. 65. Have we done 65? That was the vent, but it sounds like a different vent. Okay, it looks like we've not done 65, which is the air vent to the conference room. We, I don't think we've done the printing press either. No, we've not done the printing press. And I don't... Have we done the generating? Oh, thanks for the the pain relief goggles. Oh, exactly. Oh, that's very kind of you, Martha. So, yeah, we've not done the printing press. We've not done the generator room. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, we have done the generator room, have we? <laughs> yeah. So what would you like to do then? We've done the bio lab. So would you like to do the air duct to the conference room, type air or air duct? Would you like to go to the printing press, type printing press? Or would you like to go to the generator room, type generator what would you like to do? Yes, we were shocked. <laughs> oh, was the was that? Oh, what was that? The generator room. 
Is that what that was? Ah, maybe it was. That was 68, though. Oh, 72. Oh, yeah, you're, no, you're right, Martha. So, so the choices are, do you want to go to the air duct conference room or do you want to go to the printing press? What would you like to do? You don't have to do any of them. Most people have put printing press. I'm a little bit behind the times. Right, okay, so we're going to do the printing press, which is card 64. Card 64, 64. The room features an odd looking, oh, we've got to raise it by three though. One, two, three, so on the middle five. Oh, quite hard to, high to the danger meter. The room features an odd looking machine. Judging by the stacks of false cash everywhere, it must be a counterfeiting printing press. Bingo. We've got all the money we need. Oh, and there's a huge chimpanzee here. There's another chimpanzee. As big as a man wearing a security guard uniform. He's leaning on a machine and facing away from you and he has a gun in a holster on his belt. Attacking him would be quite a risk, but then again, with all the crazy stuff you've seen in the house, that would feel a heck of a lot easier safer if you could overpower the guard and grab his firearm. There's a sliding barred door across the room that looks like a door to a jail cell and it's partly open. Also... A rough hole in the wall leads to a dark tunnel. You're confident you could sneak into either without the guard spotting you. Do we really need to do this? Because we can go to the uh, we can go to the sliding barred door or go to the hole in the tunnel. We've done the hole in the tunnel though. Told you where. Told you they were false yeah i told you when we found the briefcase the money for oh you did did you ah yes i think you did I, th I can remember that well done martha so would you like to do this we do get a plus one which means we need to roll a four five or six we get to draw clue 63 if we lose we have to raise it by two that would be on the maximum six before we got punished so what would you like to do? Yes, Martha would like to do it. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? He's packing a chimp, a chimp and western. <laughs> found the cure to epileptic turns. Tur what? I found the cure to epileptic turns. It's a counterfeit. <laughs> We're going to do it then. We're going to have a go. So we've got a pocket knife. We've got the element of surprise, I guess. We need a four, five or six. Let's roll a six. Here we go. Ooh. Right. That's it. We can't carry on. It just said lose. Raise the danger meter by two. That was a test. Yeah, well. Kins back on four. Don't give me that. Ha. Huh. Right. We need to just go back to the room, I think. Well, or, or well, hang on. Let's see. Let me see. Oh, we've already done. We've already done 62. Yeah, we've already done 62. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that was the premonition. You slide open the bar door. Okay, so that was, uh, didn't go to plan. Would you like to go through the air duct to the conference room? Raise the story meter, danger meter by three, which means, hang on, let's have a look. Oh, I think the punishment isn't too bad, actually. <laughs> um, let's have a look. It says here, um, hang on, what does it say here, if you're instructed to raise that, if the danger meter reaches the space at the top of the danger meter by exact count or more, you must stop and take a penalty. Move the psychic mover back two spaces. Okay, so should we do that? 
because it does actually reset. So let's do that. One, two. Let's do that. Now, it, now we're back to three. And we've lost two, but we're still very high on the psychic. No, let's do that. And why wouldn't you? Should I regrow a beard? Go for it. Go for it, Jam. Give it a go. Give it a go. Okay, we're going to go to the conference room then just to see what's in there. 65. Because there might be a clue there. You've been clean shaven for two years. I normally grow a little bit of stubble. I don't really let it grow too much into a beard. But, you know, hey, that's what I do. I did grow a full beard once I and I had long hair at the time. I looked like Jesus, which was great. The air duct takes you over a loud room full of what sounds like a gang of rowdy hooligans. You peek through a grate and discover a group of massive savage chimps sitting at a conference table, <laughs> snorting and growling and beating their chests. A woman sits on the head of the table, speaking to them, but you're too far away to hear over the chaos. There's a smaller, more rickety air duct that leads to the wall by the woman, and if you're careful, you could probably make it to hear what she's saying. You can also see from here that the air duct you are in splits off and terminates in two other rooms. The room on the left is dimly lit uh, by the glow of blue liquid in some large gas vats, which we've already done. The room on the right is pitch black. You could either quietly crawl to either and jump out. Okay, we've got an optional challenge. Okay, right. So we've got an optional challenge. We'll tr we'll do that one. Um, so we need a three, four, five, or six. Let's do that. Snorting businessman. It's really in the nineteen eighties. I know. I know. It's cocaine. Let's not. Oh, no, 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 no. So Martha, this is slightly different. We don't die really in this. We didn't die. That we can carry on, Martha. Don't worry about that. I think we should do it because if we do do it then we um, we can't die if we fail yeah so I'm just I'm just gonna override let's let's do it we need a three four five or six there we go Bosh remember that it's a six I'm just trying to get more clues basically 84 it'd be nice to hear what she's talking about and I've got a feeling this clue will tell us fluke you guys, oh, how you've turned. You've changed. Okay, you crawl through the rickety air duct without breaking it, or yourself. And over here, the woman lecturing the chimps on ways to improve the profitability of a counterfeiting operation. The chimps are less than attentive. You crawl back up into the main vent, not sure what to think. Finish story card 65. So I think we will just go back to the end of the story because we've done all the other stuff as well. Um, as far as I know, although there is quite a few clues <laughs> that we've not seen, but hey, mm, interesting, interesting. Uh, that, yeah, there is still a few story cards. Jam has changed. I'm I'm almost crying due to the pain from my foot. Oh no, the pain relief was brief. Can you take any more pain relief, or do you have to wait about an hour or so? Grockers is somewhat indifferent. He is. He's contemplating life and his choices that he's made. <laughs> Aren't you, Crocs? You're all right, mate. You'll get some food soon. Okay, so, um, unless, hang on, let's just quickly do this. Um, have we gone into the pitch black room? I don't think we've actually gone maybe into the pitch black room. 83. No, we've not done the pitch black room. Let's do that. I have to wait 24 hours since this is a strong one. Oh, okay, fair enough. Can you put ice on it, Martha, then? Can you put ice on it? The room is pitch black. You can't see anything except a faintest hint of illuminating coming from the door on your left and what might be a stack of boxes next to it. Feel free to fumble around for a light switch if you like. Okay, do we want to go for the light switch? Um... Yeah, let's let's do the light switch. Should we do the light switch? I'm feeling I'm feeling fruity. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, fumble. Yes, we have. We met the man who wanted the money. We have exactly. We kind of know what's going on. But I think we should do it. So three, four, or five, three, four, five, or six. Boom. So three, 
Tips of three. Go, go to story card 89. You find the switch, and with the lights on, you see that you're in a small, cramped laboratory. Jars and beakers full of mysterious liquid cover every flat surface. You're lucky you don't um, stick your hand in a jar of acid, or worse, while searching for the lights. Now you can clearly see the door and the stack of boxes. Also, you can now see a ladder hanging down from a trap door in the ceiling. Unfortunately, the lowest rung is missing. Uh, there's no way to climb it. If you had something like a wooden dowel that fits into the ladder. Mm, there it is. If you have clue 23. Do we have clue 23? Don't think we have. Hmm. Did we... Did we use clue 23? No. Right. So, um, we can't try and climb. If you try the door to your left, or if you dig through the stack of boards. So what do you want to do? Do you want to try the door to the left? Type left. Or do you want to dig through the stack of boxes? Type uh, boxes. What do you want to do? <laughs> yes, I've changed. I now do as a chimp with glowing blue stuff trying to climb a ladder. <laughs> Called Jom. Stack of boxes. Should we do that? That door leads to the conference room. Yeah, I think you're right, Martha. So, yeah, let's do the boxes. Yeah, well played, guys. The boxes is 75. The moment you touch one of the boxes, the entire pile collapses on you and you lose your balance, tumbling to an adjacent room. All the boxes were empty. Someone went to a lot of trouble to hide this chamber, but seeing as you found it completely by accident, they clearly did a terrible job. This appears to be some sort of workshop. There's no one here now, but a large egg-shaped vehicle takes up most of the room. You can't tell if it's a boat or if it flies. It looks like someone is repairing it. I think I know what this is. <laughs> Only because we don't have real Lego. There seems to be a lot of commotion coming from the garage. There's also a door that looks like some sort of jail cell. Or maybe an animal pen. So, do we want to do... Let's do the optional challenge. The thing is, because I've got a murder mystery and I want to get as much this done as possible. At 8 o'clock I've got my murder mystery rehearsal. So, if Ian Livingston books have taught me anything, it's take everything... Isn't nailed down, yeah, absolutely. So let's search the egg ship. We get a plus one because of our psychic scale. So we need a two, three, four, five, or six. Yeah, okay. Right, let's try again. That's, that's what we needed. That's what we needed. Okay, we needed a four, five, or six egg. Draw clue 61. Okay, look, we found an alien notebook. Sally is here. Hello, Sally. We're just about wrapping it up. Just to let you know, I'm sure you're disappointed. Look, we found an alien notebook. You see symbols of the vehicle's control panels, then a notebook with the same symbols. Someone has scrawled translations in the margins. Keep this item. Move forward one on the psychic scale. So we're on 24 now. Um, and we're going to keep this. We get a plus one on psychic now. Brilliant. So that's a good object to have. Finish story card 75. Oh, hello. Check out the noisy garage. Check out. Well, I think we've done both of those, haven't we? Well, we know really what's in the noisy garage is a uh, group of blokes. And 62 we've already done. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we're going to get time for to do. So there we go. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, Sally. Um, yeah, because I've got a murder mystery. Um, rehearsal at 8 o'clock. I kind of need to get ready for that. Um, Grockle Snook's involved, aren't you, Grockle Snook? Can't tell you if he's the murderer or not, obviously. So thank you very much. So it says, that otherwise you may advance to Chapter 4. Keep all the inventory items. 
We've done it. We have done chapter three. Hurrah. Good stuff. Here's the weapon. <laughs> oh, here's the weapon. Here's the weapon. Cool. Really, really enjoyed that. I, I do. I must admit, I do like getting the cards out. Because you can put a lot of information on these items. And you don't have to write it all down. That You know, you're not worried that you're going to run out of space on the adventure sheet. So you can write what they are. I like having the little key, the little cards. Is that the way forward? Is that the way forward for game books? Or do a game book and then the, the board game version of that game book. I'm I'm curious to see how that would work. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious. Okay, nice one, guys. We've got a new brain, flaming brain. Get them while they're hot. A new clue there. I will scan that in and add it to the others. Thank you so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, the next live stream, as I say, is this Friday, 7 p.m. UK time. We'll be doing part two of The Witcher. Very excited about that. Witcher 3. Uh, enjoying enjoying that. It's good fun. And I hope you've had fun tonight playing House of Danger. House of Danger. We'll be back for part four, chapter four, next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. UK time. But before that, on the Saturday at 10 a.m. UK time, we, it is Edra Scrolls' Ramblings of a Storyteller, where we talk about fantasy, we talk about creativity, we talk about your projects, we talk about my projects. Talk about Grockle Snook's projects. Brilliant. Yes, you'll be there. Brilliant. You'll be there. Guru day. Guru day. Cool. Good stuff. Thank you so much for everybody that's watching. The show wouldn't be anything without you guys because you decide how the story unfolds. So thank you, Jam. Thank you, Lee Ring. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Wallop. Thank you, Sally. And thank you to anyone else that was watching but didn't comment. If you did want to comment, you simply follow the channel and then you're allowed to comment. And you choo can cho choose how the story unfolds. And it also helps with the algorithm as well, let's be honest. And also, if you want notifications of when I'm going live, just click the notification bell or button. Sometimes it's a bit glitchy, others it's not. It's hit and miss, just like life. Anyway, until next time, remember, magic be with you always. Bye.